So I've gotten a lot of great ideas for videos from your comments, so please leave more comments. I appreciate it. Hello once again, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, today, Stolen Moments, a great jazz tune from Oliver Nelson back in the 60s, I think. Um, it's a minor blues. I'm going to try to cover an awful lot in this video, so fasten your seatbelts. Um, things I'm going to cover, the fact that the real book chart is pretty much just a guide, and there's some things that are wrong in there, and things, things that should probably be added to the chart. Um, talk about the form of the song. It's basically a 12-bar blues with a 16-bar blues head. And uh, I'll be covering some rootless voicings, you know, a way to kind of create a piano arrangement for this with uh, like a jazz trio. The scales that you can use in the solo section. And we'll also cover some like modal voicings and some, some of that kind of stuff. And I'll touch on negative harmony, of course, towards the end. The one thing I got wrong on my last video uh, was the intro to Unforgettable. I just left out something. I left out the, the bass notes. So I just wanted to clear that up. We've got a lot to cover. Let's get at it. All right, uh, the intro. In the real book, it says it's got it written out with the bass note, and then that note, and the chord symbol C minor seven, so that would indicate this. However, we're listening to the recording. There's definitely a ninth in there, so you gotta play that. Same with the D minor seventh. There's a ninth there. And then, of course, the ninth is there as well. The chord is called E flat major seventh, but with the C in the bass, it's a C minor ninth. And that head is just played through that one time, and then right into the song. <clears throat> and in the real book, we've got C minor seventh. Oh, C minor seven and C minor six, all right. Okay, and that sounds just fine. If you listen to the recording, though, it, it's uh, a horn section kind of moving through some nice harmonies, um, kind of block voicing, but not quite. Kind of like inversions of the same chord. I didn't take the time to figure this out exactly. Um, I'm sure there's, you could find the score to this out there and figure out exactly what's going on. But basically, it's this. Kind of going back and forth between C minor ninth and an F chord. Uh, yeah, and ending really more on a C minor seventh than a C minor sixth. And then here's here's a big thing that the real book has wrong. But in the old real book it says C minor, and it's supposed to be C major seventh. Check it out. Here it is from the beginning of the A section. right there on that C major, major ninth chord. And then we're on to the next line of what seems like a blues. And right here, it just still has F minor sixth. F minor sixth, you know, can also be thought of as a D minor seven flat five, which would be your two chord. So, and you can definitely hear the altered five chord as we go back into C minor. Uh, seventh. So second line of the blues here. And I, I think uh, there's one of the horns plays a D flat in there. So it's kind of like a tritone substitution at the same time. You know, you got G down here. So you're playing a D flat up there. And, you know, that's an interesting way to think about a tritone substitution. It's not like you have to play G or D flat. You can kind of play them both. G seventh. D flat gives you a nice chord voicing there. You know, G7 with, with some other crap in there. All right. Uh, and then the bar seven and eight. And the mystery note there is the A flat. You know, it's, it, it says C minor sixth, but, but 
on the recording, A flat is in there, so it's something like that. Not quite sure, but that gives you the sound there, and it's really nice. Uh, so from the F minor. And then we go into the kind of modern section, and that, you know, for 1960, this was pretty modern. You have here, un pile de quatre. Un pile de quatre. <laughs> Sorry about my French. A pile of fourths. <laughs> just moving in what you call constant structure, because it's exactly the same thing, just moved chromatically. And it fits very nicely with, nicely with the melody up into a certain point. That's like a D minor 11th. And that, I mean, if you think E flat minor, like the Dorian mode, it's, it's kind of that sound. And then goes up there, that's C major, 6 9. And then F minor 9th or F minor 11th. And then this is the one that doesn't make any sense. You've got, got the horrible dissonance there. There's just no way you can qualify that chord, but it's, you know, you play it, it's nice, you move on. And then the melody is wrong here in the next two measures. It's supposed to st still be on uh, E flat and the book's got D, so. And here you drop it down to a lower octave and thin it out a little bit. some more kind of chromatic stuff, but now it doesn't sound like the, the modal fourths anymore. It's just D minor going up to a diminished chord, a C major, and the subdominant four minor chord. I'll just keep turning my iPad back on. Okay. Uh, and once again, the uh, book says G augmented seventh, which would be like that, and that could be considered an altered chord, but it's wrong. It's a G eleventh or any of the other assorted names that, that this chord <laughs> is called by. I like to call it G11th, it's simple. Then they repeat the head, and I'll try to go ahead and play it here. C minor there is like C minor over G, and then the 11th chord, then you repeat that. And you know, I did not take the time to work this out really. I've only ever really performed this song like backing a vocalist. And I wish I would have studied it more because, you know, probably could have supported the vocalist better if I had some kind of cool chords to put underneath that, that very uh, intricate melody. So then, uh, for the next five minutes, the song goes into a rather typical minor blues, and there's some great soloists over it. I played along with it probably for the first time in my life this morning. Um, and, you know, about halfway through that trumpet solo, I had to look up at my phone and think, that's got to be Freddie Hubbard. And so I was proud of myself for just being able to recognize his sound. He kind of plays Miles better than Miles does. He, he, he's got more chops and everything, and, of course, I think Miles and him were pretty big competitors, but um, they're both great players, and uh, it's, it's really fun to listen to him play. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the uh, blues section, and this is the imp improvisation section. Um, it's just a 12-bar blues, and uh, very typical of a minor blues, it uses the minor six chord. You can throw in the minor seventh once in a while, but the overriding harmony here is the, is the minor six chord, okay? And so the, for the first line, you know, the blues has three lines. The first line's four measures long, like they all are, and you just stay on this chord for all four measures. And you play the blues scale. All right, or you could play, uh, another scale, but we'll get into that later. And then it goes up to the four chord. 
Now this one will probably sound better as a minor seventh because the minor six chord starts to imply a minor two five one there and that's okay you can actually use that to your advantage but I would go to the minor seventh first and if you change it to the this one it, it actually is becoming a, a two chord so you could throw in the uh, the, uh, the five chord real quickly there That's a five chord right there. And then you're back to C minor for a couple more bars. Okay, and then on the two chord, um, in this song, most of the time it's a minor seven flat five, but a very typical substitution for that two chord, which is usually a minor, is to just make it a dominant seventh. It gives it more of a bluesy sound. Uh, you know, it's a little, it's good. And I, I think it's because maybe, because the, when you make that substitution, you now have an F sharp. And that's the blue note in the blue scale. All right. And what is a blue note? A blue note is, is, is somewhere in between F and F sharp. It was originally conceived maybe vocally or on the guitar where you kind of bend this note up to that one and then come back down. And of course, you can't do that on the piano, but, but uh, you, can, you can approximate it. Anyway, that's one reason why that two chord sounds so good there. So we're going to be using that one, and we're going to do some rootless voicings here in a minute. All right, so let's look at the rootless voicings. All right, C minor sixth, just take the root away, put a nine. And theoretically, you could say that the one, that the two has now been substituted for the one. It's more, it's really called the ninth. I'm going to call that the ninth. And that gives us a rootless voicing. And uh, if you really want to study this, this is a box one voicing, box one. And it's really interesting. I was just thinking about this. There's C. You know, it's this shape of chord. You can move this chord all over the place. And it has many different functions. But right now it's functioning as a minor six nine chord because it's got the minor triad there, the six and the nine. And the bass player is the one playing the root down there. But look at this. This is so awesome. You move that chord up a half step. All right? It's still box one, because it's the same formation here. But now it's functioning as C seventh with some altered stuff up here. All right? And you'll find that that works great right at the end of that, that first line when you're trying to get to the F minor. You know, Here you are on the C minor. it up and now it functions as a C dominant seventh altered all right and then you fall right into F minor and of course keep using the blues scale because that same blues scale you don't have to you don't have to transpose the blues scale you can just stay in C for the whole day even do the D seventh chord and the G Blue scale sounds great over all that stuff. There's other scales too, but that the blues scale will definitely work. All right, so we pretty much covered it here, right? We're going to use this rootless voicing. We can use this one right here to get to F minor. If you want a rootless voicing here, again, you substitute, move the one up to the, the, the ninth there, okay? And this is probably a better inversion. And you know, you can use the minor seventh there instead of the sixth a little bit if you want to. All right, and then here comes the two chord. Now, if we don't want the root there, get rid of the root. All right, now we've still got the all important third and seventh, and we're going to add a sharp nine up here and a flat 13 there. And check this out this is box one again, right? If I move this chromatically, you see. I was using it a C six nine. I was using it a C altered. I bump it up here. I gotta skip that one. But there it is. D again dominant and altered. And then I'm going to use a G altered also because that always fits the minor blues the best. And this is box two. It, it, there's box one. That's that same shape I've been using. But but here when you're going through the cycle of fifths, 
generally what you do is you use a box one, then a box two, then a box one, then a box two, box one, box two, so you can keep the voice leading smooth, you know, you're, you're not jumping all over the place. All right, so that's what we're going to be doing in this song. There's our two chord, there's our five chord, and there's our one chord. Touch the five again and come right back to the one and start this blues all over again. All right. Now, let's see. Can you make these chords simpler? Yeah, you don't have to play all four notes. You can play just three notes like that, and three notes like that, and three notes like that. That'll sound good too. All right, so, all right, if you're not, if you want to get away from the blues scale a little bit. Dorian mode is good. You just so it's like a B flat major scale. Got to have the minor third in there. But look, you don't have to have. You can have the major seventh too. Gives it a little more color, color to the sound. All right, and then. All right, and then F minor. Dorian mode. That's an E flat major scale. Just flat the third and flat the seventh. All right. Here's the D. Uh, now, D altered. All right. When we have an altered dominant chord. It's good to use the altered scale. Makes sense, doesn't it? Altered dominant chord. Use the altered scale. That's really E flat minor melodic ascending. This is the crap that takes study, you know. Anybody can learn it, but it just takes, you know, you have to first, you have to realize that it's, it's valuable information, and then you have to realize that it's worth the time it takes to learn it, and then you can learn it. If you don't have that kind of commitment to it, you can't learn it. So there's the scale. All right. <clears throat> and then we go to another altered dominant. So we need to know another altered scale for G. There's a lot of similarities in those two scales. But there's a lot of differences, too. And would you have to use them? No, no. You could just, you know, s suppose well, I'm just getting that D altered dominant down. All right. And that's all I can, ha my brain can handle at the moment. So let me do that one. And then on this one, I'll just do blue scale. All right. Of course, the blue scale is interesting. Now, if you take out the blue note, you're left with just a five note scale, which is sometimes called the minor pentatonic. Right. It's based on the major pentatonic of E flat. All right. It's the blues scale without the blue note, so th that's very useful too. And it works equally well over the minor sixth chord or the minor seventh chord. And it only takes three fingers to play. So you can use the, uh, the you know, you can, you know, learn the D altered scale. And then just switch into that easy one. Oops. And then, you know, you're just limited only by your own creativity is what you can come up with, with to play that scale. And so, you know, sometimes you, you can't come up with anything. You've got to look for inspiration. Let me go through this uh, just with the rootless voicings. We got C, and then we have C, C minor six nine, F minor, F minor six, C minor six. Thank you. 
cover a little bit about modal playing. They don't really do much of this on the uh, Oliver Nelson recording. I think they were hip to it and everything, but they, I think they wanted it to be this uh, pretty commercial-sounding record, actually. And I think it was uh, kind of a hit back in the day. And so, you know, they don't do too much of the modal stuff. It was a little too modern for people's ears back then, I guess. But if you're in C minor, you can, you can use, move these fourths around just as long as you stay in C Dorian mode. Which is two, in this key, is going to be two flats, all right? Yeah, even that can be used for C minor, right? C minor 13. So you can use that kind of stuff. And you can take it outside. All right, when you get to F minor, it's kind of the same kind of thing. You know, if you stick to the mode, every once in a while you get one that's not perfect for us, right? That's perfect, but that ain't because of this. Right, there it is again. Um, and then, really, for the two and the five, you could you could like kind of hint back towards the uh, original head of the song, you know, and do you do some of this stuff. could be a turnaround right there. Now you're on your two, and then you get to the five. So, you know, that kind of hints back to the, the head of the song. It gives the listeners a little taste of that head. So I think that's a... <laughs> gives the listeners... Let me rephrase that. Gives the listeners a, a little uh, recollection of the uh, head of the song. And then, you know, when it comes back in and plays the head at the end, it'll sound even, even nicer. <laughs> ah, actually, take it a little farther. Well, you know, there's so many possibilities, of course. But uh, just check it out. I'll do that uh, as the turnaround. So you start off in C. <laughs> a little bit of negative harmony in here, so here, here it comes. Yeah, I gotta say, I'm really on the fence about negative harmony. Um, you know, my interpretation of it is basically moving in reverse order through the cycle of fifths, using a lot of plagial cadences, four to one is kind of the, but there's so many other ways of kind of looking at it. And even just when you take, like in rock songs, when you're going from G minor, you know, if you're going on the cycle of fifths, the next chord would be C. But if you go G minor the other way, D minor, then to an A minor, that's a very musical, musically satisfying chord progression. Um, I'm going to be doing a, a little classical video soon about a Bach fugue that I'm learning. And there's he, he moves in that direction several times. And it's so freaking nice. And it just brings back in the main fugue theme so beautifully. It's one of my favorite fugues. I've waited so long to learn this song, and uh, I'm just excited about it. Anyway, negative harmony. Here's something new I found out this morning about negative harmony. First start in the key of C major. If you're going to do a turnaround in C major, you could start with the C chord, then go to the 6, the 2, the 5. Okay, so negatively, instead of going to the 6, you go to what? In negative harmony, that's E flat uh, minor six. All right, because thinking of A as a dominant, so E flat minor six, which can also be thought of as an A flat dominant. Okay, so that I go to A flat dominant. There's my rootless voicing. So that's what I'm going to go to as kind of my six chord, okay? And then, you know, I just, I talked about this earlier, how. Typically, you go from a box one to a box two to a box one to a box two when you're going around the cycle of fifths, like this. All right, the bass notes are moving more like this. Uh, like that. 
So you do the same thing with negative harmony, but you move in the opposite direction. And every one of these chords will fulfill the requirement of a dominant chord, its negative harmony version. E flat, minor six. That's the, a minor six chord is a negative harmony of, you know, a dominant seven. Then it goes to uh, cycle, of, cycle of force. This is, this is the real meaning of cycle of force. That's what negative harmony should be. And that one, B flat, minor six. Then to this one, right? And then to C, C minor. Okay, but the bass doesn't have to move that way. It will be cooler if it starts on A flat because then that makes this an, a, 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 a dominant sounding chord. And then you move in the opposite direction. All right, and you get that. All right, so let me try that again. All right, that's a turnaround. So you start on C. Usually, you know, we're coming back to a C dominant or something, you know, if we're playing the blues, we come back to a, a major chord there. But since this one's coming back to a, uh, a minor six chord, you just go through this series that I'm sure you jazz pianists out there have done this a million times. You go this way, right, to get through the cycle of fifths, and you have always have ninth, ninth chords or altered dominance or something like that. You just move in the opposite direction, like this. And to this one, it just smoothly goes right back to C minor. say if you want to stick strictly to the harmony that they use most often behind all the solos use the minor 6 9 chord use f minor 7th but throw in the 2 5 change at that point then the 2 dominant and the five dominant, both altered, and then right back to the C six nine. subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Stay well.